Hello and welcome to another episode of Motors for the Masses and this week we've got a scooter that's absolutely splattered in Marmite. So let's roll the intro and get cracking. Crack. Royal Alloy have enjoyed much success with their GP300, with the TG300 being muchly spoken about for quite some time now. And finally, it's here, no thanks to Mr Covid, in the world's first review of the Royal Alloy Tigara Grande 300S. Roll the cinematic. Ooh, we're having some this week. We are indeed. Excellent. Roll it. initial inspection you could be forgiven for thinking, oh look, a duckbill platypus has waddled into view. And it's sporting a nose from a 1970s ashtray. But the keen-eyed amongst you might look at it and say, well bugger me, that's a Series 2 Lambretta. And you'd be forgiven also, because that's exactly what it looks like. So we say, well done, Royal Alloy. You have succeeded where Lambretta themselves have failed. <coughs> but what's this bike all about? Let's take a closer look. Underneath, it's a GP300. It has the same Vespa GTS-based engine, built under license by a third party, sporting 278 cc's. Which develops 22 brake horsepower and 17 pounds foot of torque. It is four stroke with fuel injection. And is Euro 4 compliant, with Euro 5 versions coming next year. Which will pretty much be the same, just possibly a bit more strangled with the emission laws and all that nonsense from Europe. But time will tell. Uh, it is a twist and go, so the purist amongst you may complain that there are no gears and no foot brake. But welcome to the 21st century. Now, despite this being based on the GP300, Upon initial testing, it did appear to pull away faster than the GP300. Well, we could have a drag race, but is it really necessary? Uh, stupid question, yes. OK, let's set it up. OK, so we'll have a go each on each one. Oh, you put your helmet down, are you? Oh, OK, yeah, all right, fair enough. enough. All right. Wind and all that. OK, ready? Three, two, one, go! I didn't see any difference, did you? Um, I got there a tiny bit before, but nothing major. OK, now the second attempt. Are you ready? Three, two, one, go! So, to answer that question, no, it isn't. I'm glad we did that, though, because that uh, proved us wrong. Yeah, it just also proves that you're a lot heavier than I am. No, I had a lot of water in my jacket from my ride in this morning. Oh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, OK. And I'm heavier. On the front, it has two hydraulic shocks. And on the rear, it also has two shocks. 
It has 12 inch wheels with a 110 front tyre and a 120 rear using Pirelli rubber. So under the duckbill here you'll find a 220mm disc with wavy bits on which is very nice and a twin piston caliper and of course ABS. And if you peer under the skirt here you'll also find a 220mm disc with a single piston caliper also ABS. Like the GP it is all metal bodied apart from the bill on the front and the glove box which are of course plastic. Inside the glove box you have a trumpet for the hard of hearing and a USB. Uh, if you didn't know, that's for putting oil in the engine. So, yeah. I thought it was funny. That won't go in. Lights are LED, front and rear. As are the indicators, which are extremely bright. The fuel tank is under the seat with an 11 litre capacity, but like other Royal Alloys being there, that means there's no storage. Good job as a glove box. The key is nicely designed and solid and unbelievably heavy. And when the ignition is on, you have this lovely LCD display, very clear and quite classy, showing everything you need to see with touch buttons. The set button changing from miles per hour to kilometers. However, it is in Americanized mode. So you've got month, day and year at the bottom. And if it's in miles per hour, you get Fahrenheit. And if it's in kilometers per hour, you get centigrade. So the English amongst us don't get the English version. Sorry. Um, it's also got at the top there a Bluetooth symbol. And we thought, oh, OK, what could possibly Bluetooth to this? Well, we thought we'd have a look in the manual. But the manual that comes with the bike is for the GP300 with the GP300 dash in it. So that's pretty pointless. The style and finish of the indicators are a bit... Uh, but then again, the original Lambretta didn't have indicators, so the add-on look works pretty well, I think. Integral ones would have just ruined the look. And these rear indicators were designed to look like the original handles that opened the side panels from the old Lambretta, so it works for me. Size-wise, it's not far off the Series 2 Lambretta, perhaps just a smidge narrower. At 1.87 metres long, just 620 millimetres wide and 1.1 metres tall. With a 770 millimetre seat height and weighing in at 142 kilos. But the important thing is how it feels and rides. So let's get it out on the road.
So, what did you think of that? I mean, you rode it earlier, um, yeah. and I've just done the filming out on the road. Um, so, you go first. What do you think? I actually really like scooters okay. on, on the whole, and I really like the more punchy scooters. These have got so much punch. When you twist that throttle, you're just whoop, gone. Yeah, there's no delay. That's yeah. what I like about it. When you open Brilliant. it up, it's not... Um, yeah. It just goes. I think maybe the suspension, because these are quite heavy and they're a bit... I don't know. I mean, like the um, the 300, the GP 300, I didn't have an issue with the suspension. It felt yeah. pretty solid. Um, the tyres were great on the road, bearing yeah. in mind they're new tyres. No issues whatsoever with those. And I think it, it rode really nicely. As well. Yeah. Um, the dash, if the sun's behind you, it's not a nightmare, but you have to look a little bit more. Yeah, and any of these other figures are real small. Yes, they are. So they they're are they're small, not for yeah. riding, they're for when you've stopped, take a look. But I mean, so you don't you often look at the date whilst you're riding. No, but it's more like the trip like meters and the, there's a riding time on there and stuff. So it's... Uh, yeah. But the, the important bit, the rev counter, nice and clear, yeah. and the speedo, nice and, uh, and clear. And the fuel and temperature gauges are clear as well. So. Yes. Yeah, because they're in colour as well. So yeah. I quite like them. Um, the rideability, really nice. Really comfortable. Um, very easy to sling around. It doesn't feel yeah. that heavy when you're riding no. it. It's, uh, They've always got such a low centre of gravity, haven't they? Even though, I mean, even with the fuel tank being where it is, rather yeah. than sort of under the floor, yes, it's still quite low. Um, I mean, I, I had find... no problems as such with the mirrors. No mirrors are fine. But from a style point of view, I would expect them to be round. Maybe, but they're kind of round with an extra bit so you can see past your arms, aren't they? Well, I guess so, yeah. Um, as far as manoeuvring, as with any scooter, I always find myself having to tuck my knee in so I don't get my leg caught on the handlebars. Maybe it's because I sit too far forward, but I don't like sitting up on this rise, rise a bit. Right, okay, so I yeah. I sit here and then my knees are in the way of the bars because I sit with my legs kind of apart. Yes. Like you do. And then I have to tuck my knees in to... I mean, it's slightly lower avoid. than the GP. Yeah. Um, but I think that's nicer because you're more in the bike rather than sitting on top of it. That's what I don't like about scooters. You're propped up on top. Your hands are down here. Yeah. So you're on a bike, you're there. Well, on a scooter, you're like that. It feels a bit more and sporty. I don't like that. It does. Yeah. yeah. You don't feel like you're going to slide back, obviously, when you give it some. No, exactly that, so. because it's got like the little lip, and there's plenty big enough for your significant other. Yeah. Then you get your foot he, pegs back there as well. they may be. Yeah. You got your foot pegs and a little rugged luggage rack thing. It's yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, I, I've got. There's not much to say about it. That engine is very smooth. Mm. Pretty quiet. Um, I should imagine uh, a lot of people will want to have the aftermarket exhaust. I wouldn't. Haven't heard um, whether the GP300 one fits yet. Um, uh, may do. It but may I do think it yeah. probably will. Um, but yeah, uh, the switches are nice and simple, the same as the other Royal Alloys. The grips are nicer to use or nice to use. Um, the levers are very simple. It's, Brakes are good. Yeah, I mean, it does what it's supposed to do. You were saying about this hook, you quite like this hook, yeah, it's metal. it's a really nice quality It is, shopping it's not like bag a little hook. plastic cheapy yeah. hook, it's a nice yeah. metal hook. Um, I, that's what I like about it, it's just solid. It's nice and solid. Uh, you know, the, the ride, it's just fantastic. Really yeah. am impressed with the way it rides. But then again, we were with the GP. Yeah. So I wasn't expecting it to ride that much differently. And it doesn't other than the fact that you are more in the bike than on it. Yeah, and that, feel, to me, is a plus point. You feel more part of it rather than kind of perched on it. Yes, exactly. Yeah. I mean, usually you're, you're up here, whereas this, you're, you're more in the bike. And there's... Yeah. Although less yeah. of... Noise. Well, I don't know. I mean, the knees weren't really an issue for me because, you know, like that, it doesn't really touch my knees. I'm all right. I wonder that. if maybe I'm just a bit longer in the lower leg, so my knees are higher. Possible. Possible. For me, not really an issue. I want to just take a, a moment at this point in the video just to bring your attention to these badges. Now, they could have very well moulded a piece of plastic and coated it in that shiny plastic chrome stuff that a lot of things have on them. But they've gone to the extra expense of moulding an aluminium badge, dipping it black or painting it or whatever the process is for that, and then grinding the surface off with this little ridged surface, which you can't really see from over there, but. If you ever see one of these and touch it, you can feel a little ribbiness in there. And yes, that's added expense. But they could very well have just gone down the cheap route and charged you the same money. So good on Royal Alloy for that. I mean, even the S there is red. That's just an extra expense, you know? They didn't need to do it, but they have. Yeah, I can see what you mean. I also quite like the fact that um, it's in there with two tiny little Allen keys. Yeah. That's lovely, that. I really do like, like you say, the finishing touch 
is nice. But let's be honest, they've had the other Royal Alloys to play with. So I think they've gone to it and thought, you know what, we need to make this a little bit extra special. Yeah, I mean, the other ones did have we these We need to nice go badges. above and beyond, but yeah. my point is, they didn't need to go to the expense. No. No. You know, they could have done it more cheaply and made a little bit more money. I should have Googled what Tigara Grande means. It's like, is that like large tiger? Yeah, big cat, I don't know. I'm going to Google it. Back in a sec. Yep. So, upon Googling, what we've discovered is that uh, Tigara has no meaning in Italian, even though it sounds Italian. However, we did discover in Romanian it means big cigarette. There you go. Awesome. So, there you have it. A Series 2 Lambretta for the 2020s, just with liquid coolness and fuel injectionness. Albeit with a Vespa-ish engine, which could be emotionally conflicting for some. The price for this magnificent machine is £4,999 on the road with two-year parts and labour warranty. If you have it in the Jet Black or Odyssey Red, which are the solid colours. Or, for £5,099 you can have it in the two-tone versions, which are ivory white as the base colour. And then there are Odyssey Red, Burgundy Red, Ultra Blue, or some sort of grey, which is pewter grey, uh, as the complementary colour, or complementing colour. So, not bad. Yeah, so basically an extra £100 if you want the two-tone. Which I don't think is that bad. No. And uh, I think a lot of people are going to go for the two-tone. Although, I have to question your ivory white. Surely ivory is more of a cream. Well, ivory's ivory, isn't it? Everyone knows what ivory is. It's not but... white, though, is it? Why well, do you say apple white? And apples aren't white. Yeah, I mean, it's not just white, white, it? on the inside with yeah. a hinge of green. A hinge of green? It's like a hint, but uh, with a door on it. It's just off white. Yeah. Accessories will be available in the coming months, like the front rack, although we're unsure whether the GP1 fits. Don't know if it's going to get in the way with this nose, but anyway. Um, we didn't have one to try on, so we can't, and we don't want to damage this bike. I think the biggest accessory people are going to want is the rear rack, and that is definitely not the same as the GP, because no. it's a different shape and angle and everything else. So, yes, um, there's also going to be uh, uh, you know, little things like these side chrome pieces. Mm -hmm. um, and I think people will be changing mirrors and all sorts. You know, it's the usual thing that people do with Lambrettas. Customise them. Customise it, make it your own. Uh, and what we have been assured is that some of these will be available by the end of the year. So stay tuned for that. Unfortunately, they're not available right now. And that brings us to the end of this episode of Boats for the Masters. I want to say a massive thank you to John for letting us use his bike. Unfortunately, there just aren't any available for demos. So um, I spoke to a customer who is owning this bike, and he has very happily let us use it for this video. So thank you very much, John, thank for you. that. And he got a mug for that. Awesome. He did, and he was very happy. Splendid. Anyway, until next time, please ride and drive carefully. But smash the bell and have fun. No, all right, let's do that again. <laughs> please remember to like, subscribe, share, uh, click the bell. Smash that like button. I hate that. I don't want to use that. It's so vloggy. It is. Yeah, don't do that. Click, click the like click button. It, push it. Or if you suck, click the dislike button. button. What? Click the dislike button if you suck. What are you saying? If you like the video, click the like button. If you, if you don't like the video and you suck, click the dislike button. I don't know what you're saying. I'm confused. That's weird. Why? Don't say that. Why? I apologise for that. I don't know what he's banging on about. What, if you don't like the video? What's this suck business going on? If you suck. Are you American? Oh, whatever. Anyway, if you, like that. It, if you like it, click like. If you don't like it, click dislike. Either one, doesn't matter. Yeah, until next time, please ride and drive carefully. But have fun. Bye! Bye. Good God, honestly, you're so hard to work with.